short mimer from from the other river. Yeah, from where? This was from Tafkuf Samachbet. It's after 1801. And then we saw that later, and they didn't, after all they learned, they didn't check when, when this is from. But the uh, page 94 in the book so was uh, a few books in this book, so you have to go back to it. Ah, got more. So with this mimer, he, uh, he extended what he taught here. And the, and the main thing is, this was so, it's had such an impact on the people who watch. And there's a very nice lady in Germany, who's an artist. So she did a few drawings. She did a study and then an actual uh, watercolor. I think it's watercolor, maybe it's oil. Of, uh, of the boy that we talked about. He said that the atzelen, what does atzelen mean? So it means that there's seichel that comes into you. That every day of your life, there's no, uh, there's no understanding that comes into you. So we gave the image of that when you're young, so you understand the music, you understand the pleasure in music, but you don't know yet how to, um, how to put it together with actually playing music. So the child, he takes a little block of wood, and, he, and the author ever says, it's like he plays the block of wood, and for him it's the same thing. Because the music is apparently in his mind, he has the pleasure from it, but he doesn't yet have the seichel, he doesn't have the understanding of how to actually actualize it. So as you mature, you begin to understand how to take those things that were pleasurable, in some deep sense that you have of godliness or of music or whatever it is, of art, and you, and you begin to learn how to bring it down into reality, how to actualize it. And you said that, that every day of your life, there's more and more tzlamim. You get a new tzalem. You get a new image of God. So this image of God, so here he didn't say this straight out. He just explained that, the, that that's how you mature, that you get more and more tzalem. Here, in the, in the Maimur, in the Bechukoisai, and uh, what do you say, Mim Zayn Gimel, he says, let's see again, Mivu'a ba'etzchayim, kinat tzalem, shul kinat nefesh ha'sichrit. So the Chiddush was here, that what the Arizal calls Tzlamim, we'll see in a moment what that is, he says this is what we call the intellectual mind, the intellectual soul. And the Arizal, the, the, the Tzlam is the intermediary, it's the Mimutza between the or and the Kli, between the light and the vessel. And in Chabad, usually light and vessel is Tzura V'chomer, is the form and the matter. What are the form and the matter? The, ma the form and the matter, who nefesh erokit and nefesh abemit. The form of man is his the divine soul, and his matter is his animal soul. But the chiddush here is the varer gerurim, that everything that they read talked about about doing the work of berurim, of clarification, of, of sifting out the holiness out of everything. So that's what the talim does. Why? Because who does the berurim? The nefesh asichlis, that's, that's the understanding in it by the altar of it. That the intellectual mind, that's what actually does the uh, biru. Now, what does it mean to do biru? He doesn't say here. He says a little bit, but he doesn't say, he doesn't say the main, main thing. So you have to take it from somewhere else. So from somewhere else, the understanding is the biru means in seichel to come to the bitul in every seichel. It's not enough to just understand something. So the person understands uh, how the kidneys function. It's a deep understanding. He can do something no one else can with the kidneys. But if it's not battle, if it's not, if this understanding doesn't lead it, doesn't lead to further nullification before God, so that's not the tachlis of the seichel. That's not what the seichel was really meant for. So you can do things. And that's very good. Like we said here, the atzalim, each, each part of the atzalim that comes in is another ability to do something in the world, to actualize things. And you get more and more of them every day. Every person has a certain allotted amount that he'll get. But to reach the tachlis of it is to cause the nefesh behemis, cause the animal soul to reach a state of bitum. 
The seichel, that's what it's supposed to do. It's not that the seichel is bato. The seichel itself is not bato. It's just that in everything that you learn, you have to reach the point of chokhmah in it. Chokhmah is always bitter. So in, in, in science, for instance, they usually stop with bina at most. Like the bina is, the, is, is science. It's like a rational mind. But to have chokhmah is already to see why this rational mind should cause you to have bittel before Hashem. And if you can't explain that, and the, and the animal soul doesn't understand it, then you haven't reached the topless of the circle. You haven't reached the purpose of that intellect, of that understanding. Because the, the animal soul is just like a simple uh, animal. It's very interesting. In Natanya, that's not what he says. Right? In Natanya, he says it's the nefesh behemoth that's from Noga. And it's the one that's both good and good and, and the opposite. So, how did suddenly the nefesh sikhlis become like that? He forgot what he wrote in the time. Shouldn't think so. So, so a simple explanation is to say that in Tanya he talks about Klippus Noga. He's not talking about Noga itself. What's the difference? But there's two different things. There's, there's a Klippa. Klippa means that this thing is concealing godliness. That's what a Klippa does, conceals godliness. Noga itself is just a mixture. Doesn't mean that necessarily that the mixture is, con- is concealing God. Somebody could say the moment that you have good mixed up with evil, that automatically is a concealment of God. But here, for a little, the first thing that comes to mind is that that's not exactly true. That things being good and evil is not necessarily concealing a, a, a godliness. Why? Because that's exactly what the serpent told them. That you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So. You could say, you could argue, good and evil means are separate, not, not, not mixed up. But it also could be that Hashem knows both good and evil, He knows both. And it doesn't cause Him confusion, it's not mixed up. He knows this and He knows that. And so, so you could explain here, the, a simple explanation, that, that the nefesh sikhlis, the intellectual soul, when it knows the good and the evil, it's not necessarily a klipa. Not necessarily a clipper. It's just it knows this and that. Like Hashem knows, he knows he knows both. Another explanation is that what is what do we mean by nefesh sikhlis? Nefesh sikhlis we mean the intellectual soul that grows out of the animal soul. So it has to be also mixed up good and evil. So he's not saying that that the animal is not from Klippa's Noga. It is from Klippa. It's also from Klippa's Noga. But the intellectual soul that grew out of it, that is also mixed up. It's also the, 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 the first understanding that the person has, the way that we grow up thinking, unless you grew up drinking Chazal, drinking the sages, <laughs> even when you were a child, then our first, um, first, uh, uh, say first uh, anacha, our first uh, Assumption. assumptions are based on the animal soul, which means that all our intellect is is geared at providing the animal soul with what it needs. That's called chachamim and lela. That's called that they're wise in order to do evil. Why is it called evil? Because it's only to provide for the survival of the animals. I mean, there's no altruism in it. There's no ability to go outside myself. So because I can't go outside myself, so that's called uh, that's called uh, being stuck in myself. That's chachamim now. In any case, what happens is that even though the intellectual soul grew out of the animal soul, it has something that the that the animal soul doesn't. It has a seichel. It has a tzedim. Because it has a tzedim, it can bring out. It can rectify, it can purify, it can clarify the animal soul. It can, it can teach it in a way 
that even the animal soul will understand that it's better to live this way and not that way. Meaning that it's better to live with doing mitzvot, it's better, it's, it's better to live serving Hashem than it is to live serving yourself. Even the, even the animal soul can understand that. That's not the only reason why we serve Hashem, but for the animal soul that has to be the explanation. If the animal soul doesn't hear that this is better, I think my wife likes to say that I don't know who has all the mahaba, but I know who has Ganeidim. <laughs> who has Ganeidim? The Chassidim, who are what we call uh, Mehudar families, and they have 12 children and uh, a thousand grandchildren and a million uh, great grandchildren. And, uh, they spend their whole lives just uh, going from Simcha to Simcha. So it's better to live this way. <laughs> you don't get divorced, everything is much, much better. It's a much norm a more normal life. It's the way a human being should, should, should live. I, what happens after, uh, we don't know. <laughs> we don't, I don't know what they did. But, but the, the, that has to be part of the explanation for the animal so that it's better to live this way than it is to live another way. And if you have cravings, so it's better for me to, uh, to leave some of my, or many of my cravings unsatisfied and yet to still have a better life. It's the same way that right, the person, you teach them to save money. So you could buy everything you want with all your salary and still take, and take more debt on. on. And oh, you've got a good job, and then you know, but it won't last forever. It might, but the, the chances are that it won't. So how do you want to live? So we have to explain to the animal soul with these with these uh, considerations, with these types of arguments. So here he does a trick that he does many times. He takes the pasuk out of its literal meaning. And he flips it, completely changes it. Shata means Hashem is looking at our sins. You placed our avonot in front of you. Alumenu, alumenu is our, our youth, is in front of your, the light of your face. Because the light, the light of your face. But because of the end, and also because of the word shata, we'll see in the second, shata is not written like that. Here they wrote it male. So they wrote it with a hey. And the Pesach itself is written with a, without a hay. It's just shin tuck. So he says, the purpose of 70 years is to rectify... And he flips it completely and says, the, the shot of the Pesach is that all of our sins are before you, Hashem. And he turns it into that we want to clarify them. We want to, we want to refine them. We want to, to fix them. Meaning that our sins will be before you. What do we mean? That they will transform. They'll be something good. Because once the sin is transformed into a, into a positive thing, it becomes, it becomes a, an adornment, like a crown for Hashem. And our youth will become, will become the light of your face. Meaning... And all this is done by the Tzedim. All this is done by the intellectual soul, by the Tzedim. Every, 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 every new idea that you have, that's another Tzedim. So you have to think, to, what, what, does he, what does he want to say? In the continuation, he, he explains this much more. What he means is, that, that's what his Bonimus is. His Bonimus is having a strong mind and intellectual thinking and thinking about things deeply until you reach how they, how they cause you bitter before Hashem. It's understanding something to, to its depth. If you can take any story, it can be a story about some, I can remember, many times I would ask for a scandal or something, so I'd get a story about some, some, some long forgotten nobleman in, I don't know, in France, in Italy, and who knows what. I never remember those stories. But he remembered them. Why did he remember them? Who? who? Rav Stanzels. Because when he read them, he immediately thought about them. He says, there's some seifo here, there's some knowledge here. How do I take this and turn it into a Buddhist Hashem? How does this become something that causes me to nullify myself before sin? So he remembered the stories. He also had a good memory. But he always had like a... He said, when you asked him a question about how do you do this or that, or this question about a Buddhist Hashem, that, because he came up with these... There's no way I would have ever remembered... Story like that, I would have read it. 
I don't think I've ever read stories like that. But the moment that you look at the seichel and everything, there's a Torah like that by Rav Nachman also. The seichel is a tzedem. It almost the same thing as what he says. Every time that you do that, you're drawing down more of the tzedem. And that's why each person is given 70 years, meaning a lifetime. That's what I told you before, that Rabbi Yitzchak doesn't look at life, how long it is. He doesn't care really how long it is. What he really cares is, did I do my bureau during that time? Did, did, did I use the time to, in his mind, it's very clear, it's, it's bonus. It's like more and more intellect. To look more and more deeply into the sugya until he comes up with what he feels. Even the Chazali does the same thing. The deeper you look, the more bitter you, you find. The more, the more you feel nullified before Hashem. And the cycle of everything is like that. That's, that's by the way, what, what the author is talking about here, because he wants to convince us the Chukotai, he is going to explain, not here, but a little later, the Shtech Hakikot in the second chapter here. There's two types of engraving. But the engraving, the, the, the deep part of engraving in the Arizo is the way that the brain engraves the skull. That's, that's how we describe it. I don't know what they thought, if they thought it was biological or not biological, but when they looked at the brain of animals, obviously, so they saw that the brain was like, it had these uh, crevices. And the crevices for them was like it fit the shape of the skull on the inside. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's how they describe it. I don't think it's true. The skull on the inside is, is, is completely uh, smooth. smooth. But, but that, that's how they describe it. So whether, because why would these crevices be? So the, the understanding was that if they came, I think this is still to some degree accepted, that the deeper a person thinks, the more, they thought it was like the forehead, right? the person thinks very deeply, so they get creases in their forehead. So the, the image was that that's the same thing that happens in the brain. So the more that you think, the more creases, the more crevices in, in, the, in the brain matter. But that I don't know about like ancient medicine, whether they really thought this, they didn't think that. And the Arvizo, when he took this information, he explained that the more deeply you think about something, the more you're affecting the Galgalta. We talked about the Galgata. Galgata is the crown of Arich. Not exactly the crown, it's the crown of the Gvura of Arich. It's the highest tikkun. After the Galgata, there's Taladib Dorcha. Right? There's seven tikkunim we're talking about. So that Galgata, that's the source of all the different talents that a person has. That's where it starts. And the first talent is Avram's talent, Avram Avinu's talent. What was his talent? To be battle to Hashem. In a certain sense, that's the essence of the concealed mind. The essence of the concealed mind, when you reach that level of understanding, then you reach Avram's ability to be battle before Hashem. So that's really what he's talking about in this mind. But to begin with, he, he wants to convince us, he wants to show us that in the Arizal, this idea of a tzelem means that every day of life you should be thinking about something and trying to reach how that something adds to your bittal before Hashem. Every, every sugya that you take, you don't need many sugyas every day, I don't know if you can handle too many sugyas. But every issue that we take into our mind, we should go deeply enough so that it affects us like the world affected Abba. That, that you come to be nullified before Hashem. That's that's me. If you haven't reached that level of understanding of the sugya, then you haven't reached it yet. So what, what time is it? That's it? Eight o'clock. Okay. You're late. And I'm late. Unless somebody else is late. Seven. Seven.